everybody, it's Gail from Gail's Bookish Things. I have been having fun comparing a few inks over the past day or two. My um, friend Marcy at Marcy Me sent me a few ink samples, and one of them um, I was eager to try was Noodler's Antietam. And right here, just on that little swatch on the label, it kind of made me think of what dried blood looks like. So maybe that's morbid. I don't know. That's what I thought of. So I decided to um, ink up a pen right away with that. And I chose my Twisby Diamond 580 in a broad. <coughs> I loved this right away. I mean, it was one of those responses where you're just like, oh, that's nice. I didn't put a lot in at first and I ran it dry pretty quick. So I went ahead and added quite a bit more of the ink to my pen. And I'm finding that combination absolutely wonderful. Okay, it's gonna sound weird, I know, but the way that this writing looks like to me is, is if you could write with ketchup. To me, it seems like the color of ketchup, not the consistency, but just if you were able to convert ketchup to an ink, that's the color to me. It's like a really deep red with a little bit of orangey. It's not a bright in your face red like uh, J. Huban's, um I have it, Rouge Hematite. I really honestly do not like that red. I thought I would love it. I don't like it so much. <clears throat> the This shade I am much more drawn to. When I was writing with the Noodlers Antietam, I, I may not be pronouncing that right. I should know. Um, it reminded me of Monteverdi's Pumpkin Cake and Diamine's or Diamine Ancient Copper. So I did these big circle swatches of those. And when I was writing with it, I thought, I wonder if this is a little bit like Diamine's Rider Blood, Writer's Blood. As you can see, it's nothing like it at all. This seems so dark here. I just don't think when I write with that that I'm getting this deep eggplant color. It's really funny how a big swatch versus the writing can look so different. And then I thought, hmm, it might be a little bit like Vinta Laguna, so I swatched that one as well. But you can see really the similarity to these three. These two additional ones, not really so much. Um, if you squint, you can kind of see maybe why I thought of that with that one, but <clears throat> they're quite different. These three seemed very similar. When I was writing, writing with this, I thought I love it, but I probably don't need it because it really reminds me of these two. And yet it does have a little more pink leaning. I um, was kind of uh, intrigued by that. So I decided to do the chromatography sheets to just compare these for the fun of it. I really do like this and I love it in this pen. The debate would be, do I need a bottle of it? You know, maybe another sample would be a good way to go, just because of the similarity. But like I said, it did have a lot of pink, or so I thought upon just looking at the swatch. So when I did the chromatography, I was like, wow, I, I was right on. I surprised myself that this does have a leaning of pink. And then that bright, vibrant yellow and this is purple this top line is purple and there's a bit of orangey there so I thought that was quite interesting so I went ahead and did the others um, let me find these in the order that I have them here <coughs> the um, Monteverdi pumpkin cake has quite a bit of pink as well surprised by that but more of an orange yellowy and orange as it worked its way up the strip. Quite similar, but when you look at these in person, there's definitely that more rust, um, more leaning towards orange in the swatch. And then let's see, Diamine Ancient Copper. 
again, pink. I, I just wouldn't think that these had pink in them. That I would, but I, I was happy with myself that I was able to distinguish that before doing the little test. The ancient copper, I'm not even getting the shimmer on my test swatch here, but again, a little more purple, a deep pink, and that orangey, and then rust color. This one kind of ended more with, in person this looks like a deep purple, and here it's somewhat that, but more, a little bit lighter. <clears throat> and then Rider's Blood is really nothing like these, and obviously not here, but when I write with Rider's Blood, I got more of a sense of a, of a, a deep red, so, and I did my um, dip pen here, my glass tipped dip pen for the writing, except for on this one. And so that lays down just, at least the way I dip it, almost too much ink. Obviously that one was overdone. But look at that, that's purple. Bluish maybe, maybe a blue, blue-gray. Going into purple and then a, a rich, deep, rosy hue almost. Kind of surprised by that, intrigued by that. This is one of those things that's grown on me. I didn't understand why people wanted to bother with this, but now that I've done it, and I thank Marcy for the urge to do this. <laughs> oh, the power of suggestion, I always say, makes us do all kinds of things we thought we might not want to do at one point. And then the Vinta Laguna is all about pinkish, light, uh, maybe a light pink to a deep corally pink, and then the last little swirls, little waves of color are a deep, comfortable red. When I say comfortable red, it's a red that I like. These to me are a little more red leaning. These are a little more orange or rust leaning. Um, I much prefer to write with these than my Rouge Hemati, but it's just a different totally different kind of color. So there's that one. This is a nice swatching of that actually. Sometimes when I'm writing with it, well you can kind of see here maybe, it just looks like a sort of a bland brownish red, but the swatch is prettier. I love the feel of Vinta Laguna though. It's a very nice writing experience for me. Um, I use it in my Ben New Briolette and really like it in that. So, um, as far as sheen goes, the Diamine Rider's Blood, I would say has a gold sheen. The Diamine Ancient Copper, you would want to say a copper sheen, but I, I'm seeing more of a bronze sheen. A little bit of sheening in these, but so little, it's hard for me to distinguish exactly what I'm seeing. And then this one has a little bit of green sheen to it. I do not typically pick up on that when I'm writing with it. And then here in the writing, you can really see the, the sheen here and quite a bit in the copper too. This is Cosmo Air light paper, if you're wondering. So that's that. Um, I am enjoying this color and I had a couple comments on my Instagram where I, uh, that one shows up on the front of the picture and a uh, person said that they love this. So I definitely see the draw. It's nice to write with something that's a fun, maybe not a fun color, but just a, a color that's not so dark that you can't distinguish it. It feels nice and light during, during these um, cloudy days. I've been writing a lot with my um, Franklin Kristoff and I had that inked up with Lamy Tourmaline. And I have my new Vanishing Point with Yamabudo. And those two colors are so bright and poppy. They're very happy. And I'm finding that as much as I like all different kinds of weather, I like that bright aspect, the otherwise gray 
weather type day. So it just adds a little bit of pop of color. I tend to want to do wintry colors, you know, something like this during these months, but that that's given me a little perk in my journaling that I've really been enjoying. So anyway, just thought I'd show you that comparison. I was quite intrigued by that. And if you like the color of ketchup or dried blood, Noodler's Antietam is for you. It's really, really a pleasant flow and it looks great in this pen. It just has like a tomato -y look. <laughs> I really like it. The creators probably don't like that assessment, but that's what it made me think of and I and I do like it. So that's all for now. Take care. See you again soon. Bye.